Tankwitz. I'm from New York, and I'm playing Buster. And I'm Casey Kaloran. I'm from New York City, and I'm playing Annie Wilkes. I'm Sami Chester. I'm from New York City, and I'm the director. I'm Clark Carmichael, and I am from northern New Jersey, although I'm originally from Kansas City. It's hard to admit that you're from New Jersey. Uh, and I play Paul Sheldon. Oh, should I have told them my original birthplace? I don't place? know. It's up to you. Yeah. I, oh, I'm I originally from to, Chicago. You know. oh, well, I'm originally from Chicago. Yeah. Nice. I went to school there. I, I, I know that. Yeah. I know that. So why do you wear a Kansas City Chiefs t-shirt? Because <laughs> I grew up in Kansas City. Uh, my mom, it's a complicated story. My uh, family's divorced over and over again. Um, actually kind of research for Paul. Uh, and my mom lived in Kansas City. My dad lived in Southwest Iowa. And so I, I root for all of the Kansas City teams. I root for the Royals too, which is really difficult wow. this year. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's not okay. easy. But Chiefs, go Chiefs. Wow. They play you, the Bears this Sunday, by the way. I, I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a fun rehearsal. Yeah. <laughs>
opening up an encyclopedia if you can if you're that old enough to that you remember encyclopedias <laughs> yes uh, i've thrown mine out yeah um i love encyclopedias and i i i i loved reading the book only after i had read the play about four or five times and then i thought okay i just need to read this so if any of you you know came to me with the question that i would have a, a sensible answer does that does that make sense definitely yeah. and I, I know as i'm working on it i'm I, it's a great resource to have the book, but it's not quite the same. Mm -hmm. And if you're if you're a book lover of this particular book, it's not exactly like what you're going to see, but it's it's uh, it's very similar. I don't think you'll be disappointed at all. You know, and I think what's what's even more important than that in terms of the process uh, for me was we had these auditions on both coast and here uh, in, in Colorado, and I wanted to make sure that I didn't get a photocopy of Kathy Bates or a photocopy of Laurie Metcalf or a photocopy of, of Jimmy Kahn. Mm -hmm. I wanted actors who could just kind of like roll their sleeves up and just jump in the mud and roll around. So that, that was very important. And I think had I read the book before that, I think I would have been a, in, a, in a pickle, in a real pickle. Mm -hmm. Right, so, yeah. And there will be mud. There will be mud. <laughs> <laughs> so this is day number three, and um, I'm, 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 I'm still learning stuff about each of you, um, and, and we're learning stuff as a unit about each other. I'm really interested in how you, I guess I'll start with you, Clark, how you relate, or if there is any connection between you and Paul Sheldon. I've never been tortured. Uh, Thank God. Yeah, so um, that is acting. Uh, yeah, you know, I have to put it, that part of, of the story it has to be my imagination. You know, I've been in situations where I couldn't get out of, but n nobody, I wasn't locked in a room. Uh, so that that is coming from, you know, my imagination. Um, I have done some writing. Uh, I'm no, I'm not published. Um, but I, as far as like the, the critical acclaim and that sort of thing, you know, I think our business is similar. You know, we, you know, we're in shows that are great and we're in shows that aren't so great. And, you know, our performances are applauded or they're not. And, uh, I, I think that's relatively easy, you know, when we have scenes and you're giving me a hard time about, the beginning of Misery's Return, you know, I, that is not hard at all to to, to be annoyed about. Um, as far as being a star, uh, I've been around a lot of stars. Uh, you know, I've I've worked with Sandra Bullock and um, you know Robert De Niro and you know a bunch of famous people and and they it's a different thing for them. People know who they are, and some are nicer than others, and and. Uh, you know, I, I've witnessed it f close, but I haven't actually experienced it. You know, mm. I, uh, I haven't, I don't have an entourage. Nobody chases me down. Um, but, I, but I've seen, I can draw from those people, you know, who are in the spotlight and who do date famous people. And, and uh, I, I can, I have a pretty good sense of, of, I think I have a pretty good sense of what that is. Um, I guess those are the, he's a writer, he's a star, and he's tortured, so. And I, I have had a car accident. I have had a car accident. Okay, glad you made it. Yes, yeah. not, a, not a serious one. Oh, okay, good. What about you? Oh boy. Well, um, <laughs> actually, uh, when I was doing my research uh, with Annie's mental health, um, the aspect of abandonment, coming up was really something that I hooked on right at the beginning, that kind of like, almost you feel like you'll die if that person leaves you. Um, I can connect to that. I, I definitely can connect to that. Also, the obsession, the kind of uh, fixation of it all. I, I draw from my, my own recovery with alcoholism. Uh, nine years, yeah. 
um, that I, I, I've, I've had my own psychosis with those things and I can understand the, the little bit I can of how real it feels when you're in those states. You know, how, how much you're pushed up against the wall in, in those moments and it's like, um, it's like cornering a, 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 like a lion in, in a corner and Annie is the lion and she has to get out uh, at any cost. And this is, she has to save her hero, Paul Sheldon, her idol, Paul Sheldon, from his mistakes. And she does not want him to leave. Hmm. He's her world. What, what, what about you, Mike? Because your, your amazing importance in, in, in this whole storyline is, is one of investigation. And so I'm wondering how you are approaching that. Well, actually, um, my training, which was from Stella Adler, was um, she would always tell us, you must know the background of the character, where they came from. You must develop an entire story, how this, they fit into the society, how the society affects them, their uh, attitude to something. But one thing she would always say is you must know their profession. And I think in this particular character, the profession is key. Um, so that is really where I anchor my approach to this character. He's a sheriff, but in that he's a sheriff, he also has to be a bit of a detective and an investigator. And how he does it, what his choices are, how he does it, what he's trying to find out, all the aspects of his professional life is where that's, shall we say, that's the key that opens up the whole box to me. Got it. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. So we're all uh, union professionals, and uh, we would be remiss if we didn't say something about this. So how are y'all feeling about this, this strike with uh, the writers, the actors, uh, now the, the auto workers? Mm. Right. So uh, what is what does that say uh, about about the country and how does that affect our work? Well, I fully support the strikers. Um, I have not been on the picket line yet. I don't live that close mm -hmm. to the picket line, uh, but I think the strike is going to go on long enough that I'll have time to get there. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm a member of two unions and um, luckily the stage union, Actors' Equity, is not on strike, so we're not crossing any picket lines here. Now, I feel so lucky for theater right now. Just, I, I, my heart goes out to all of the only TV and film people because it's a standstill right now. Um, I'm part of SAG-AFTRA, and I fully support the strike. It's a necessary means to get... Um, some more equality out there. Um, and I think it's a, it's a, it's a national labor movement. So it's not just about the entertainment industry. Absolutely. Correct. Correct. Well, I, actually I'm sag after and, and equity, obviously. Um, and I think as necessary as past strikes were, um, this may be one of the most necessary strikes possibly in history, if I can be a little bit extreme about that, uh, because of the thing about artificial intelligence. Um, artificial intelligence is a threat. It can, I'm, there are ways it can be a benefit, but again, like anything else, when used for the wrong reasons um, and using it for profit without any give back to the people that you're taking, whose images and voices you're taking, and that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to this thing. So the strike may go on for a while, but it's, um, it's necessary. I don't even see any room for compromise. And that goes to other strikes also. It goes to the auto workers. There is a real threat to workers in general today. Um, we've never been in a more 
you know, financially polarized society. Um, the poor get poorer and the rich get richer. And um, w with artificial intelligence, um, it could be a, um, a civilization breaker as far as our present civilization. So it's a necessary strike. I'm, I'm glad we're fighting for it. It's very difficult. People are making extreme sacrifices. We're lucky because equity is not on strike. And I've always felt an actor's home is on stage anyway. But um, but the fact is, we can still work. We're lucky to be able to do that. But a lot of people, a lot of people are, are out of work. But they're fighting for an important, a very important cause. So, and, and and I also want to say that I don't I don't think there's a cold heartedness uh, by by the writers or or, or by the actors. Um, I think is you know I've got I've got children that need braces and need shots. I've got I've got a mortgage to pay. I've got different there are different things that I need just in my in my daily life, uh, and so I'm not I'm not asking for a lot in the scheme of things, right? Um, and and I I think we also understand what we're asking about the other services connected to television and film, craft service, uh, wardrobe, yeah, the Teamsters, yeah. I, I, all of that. And um, I, I think if those folks would say, yeah, okay, fine, we're not gonna cross either. I, I think that's where the rubber's gonna meet the road, right? Well, it's, it's having an effect. I, I have been on the picket lines. I encourage everybody, I mean, not, I don't get there every day or even every other day, but it's good to go there. Yeah, um, it's, it's actually, a, it's positive on the picket yeah. lines. It's yeah. really like a united yes. front. It feels like a strong community. And it's a way of communicating exactly what we're striking about. Um, I think it's important for the public to know about this because you might say the actors and writers, as far as the AI stuff, is uh, are the canaries in the coal mine. Yeah. Um, this can spread all over the place. So hopefully, as far as I know, most people in this country and, um, and in Canada and Britain and other countries are supporting the strike, but it's important the more support there is and the more that the issues are that you're aware of people are aware of the issues and realize the stakes that's that would be better yes sir so sammy hmm. <laughs> um with directing what are things that are similar and what are different from people saw in the movie well there's a character named paul there's a character named buster <laughs> and there's a character named annie and other than that, um, I don't think I don't I don't I don't think we're drinking that Kool Aid. I think we want to we want to come across as being original. I know that uh, that folks are expecting to see what they saw on the screen or what they saw on Broadway, and I'm not. I'm not downplaying any of those performances or air that work. All those people were absolutely brilliant. I mean, it's it's kind of hard, kind of difficult to say anything, you know, bad about you know Bruno Bruce Willis and Laurie Metcalf on Broadway, or about Dame Kathy Bates and, and Brother Jimmy <laughs> Kahn, you know, uh, on, on the film. But I'm not interested in doing a photocopy of somebody else's work. And so, uh, as we were casting this, I really wanted to make sure that I had actors that understood that and that we were going to not be afraid uh, to go into those murky waters. Because I think, I think it's really, really important that we kind of educate the public as well as like, you know, we're going to bring you something new, right? I, I, I've said this before, but I, I, I want people to, to sleep with their lights on for a couple of nights after they see this production. I, 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 w I want them to do that, but I also want them to be empathetic to mental illness. I, I, I want them to really, really um, understand what that is. And if they don't know what that is, then they should Google it and they should start paying attention and they should start demanding that 
uh, care is given to folks with this illness. Because we just can't say, oh, you know, Annie's bad because, you know, she's killed all these people. We have to ask ourselves a serious question. What put her in that position to do the things she did? And what would have happened had we really been paying attention enough mm-hmm. to, to kind of cut her off at the pass, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm having a ball. Uh, I have three great actors. I have a great creative team. And so it's like, if somebody asks me, what's your wish? Pretty much I've got it. So I'm good. Oh, I want to see the show. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, you know, so I love you three. But at some point, we're going to have to say goodbye. Uh, Because after after rehearsal week number two, you're probably not going to want to see me. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, but I'm curious, what did you do before this? And do you have anything in the on the drawing board for after this is over? Yeah, uh, this year I did, I started with uh, a one-man show um, called Harry Clark. Uh, He was off-Broadway about two or three years ago with Billy Crudup, and uh, we did it at Vivid Stage. It's it's an amazing story. I love him. Um, Really daunting, though, you know, it was me for an hour and a half talking and doing my voices, Uh, but it was fun. And then I did, uh, uh, what's it called? Pretty Little Liars. Um, there's a, a, like a, I guess a spinoff, Pretty Little Liars Summer School. Um, I did a day on that. And then I did a film called Sally Get the Potatoes, which actually shot right as we were like, this was all happening. You know, we wow. were casting this. Um, and it was, I played a dad in a divorced family. It was about a a little girl who's five and she her mother asked her to get the potatoes and she hides in the laundry hamper and kind of gets pushed around and sees the family destroyed basically they they decide to get a divorce and uh anyway it's uh it's, so kind it's of a musical a, it's a musical okay uh yeah. and then after this i'm gonna do a film it's it was originally called blood a comedy and they've changed the name. Uh, it's going to be a SAG low-budget film, and it's called Jacqueline Remembers All This. Uh, it's another... I get, get a lot of the uh, problem family shows, and the mother, the matriarch of the family, brings us all together uh, because, you know, she's going to die. And I'm getting married, but it turns out I'm going to be marrying my half-sister. Um, that kind of a situation. So it is a musical. So it is a musical. And then I am going to do a musical. In January, I'm going to do a musical called um, uh, Gone Missing. Uh, It was a musical done by the Upright Citizens Brigade uh, about items that have been lost. Oh, cool. Um, Before this, I, I filmed a short film that was felt like a feature it, it, it was from 1926 and I think the last date was 1996 um and so it was a huge span it takes place in Poland and it focuses on uh, the war in the 40s um and it was a very serious piece and I had to do a Polish accent <laughs> And I was very excited because I love accents. Uh, directed by Mac- Michael Masaroff. Uh, and he's submitting it now. Mm. So fingers crossed with that festival. Yes, yes. Um, I was part of a very exciting reading uh, that we staged uh, at the Apollo Theater, uh, written, directed by Africa Brown, uh, where I'm also playing a very antagonistic person. <laughs> Uh, and speaking, I play a lot of antagonistic people. I got it. I just got that face. Um, and after this, I also produce a uh, work film. I will be putting my producer hat on because I'll be starting pitching for a new feature that was written by and being directed by Edna Louise Bissell. And that is called Three Monkeys. And it actually draws, it was inspired by my rock bottom story. 
it's not about that. It's turned into something else, but I do play, um, it's the weekend right before my character goes into rehab and she don't want to go. Mm. And it's a comedy. Okay. And it has, and it brings in a deaf actor and there's going to, we are trying to get half deaf crew. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's a mountain. Yeah. Um, but we we're, we're really hoping we can do that. Cool. Brother Mike. Well, <clears throat> actually what I was doing immediately before is what I'm going to continue doing afterwards. Um, I was, one project is we're trying to get a friend of mine, uh, Dave Schmidt, who's a wonderful playwright, we're trying to get his plays up, at least his readings, and get them produced. A very prolific play, playwright. Um, but the project that I've been um, mainly focused on, and um, it's coming more and more to fruition, is I've been writing a I've written the first and, and pretty much the first two plays um, revo of a trilogy revolving around the murder of Canadian prisoners of war by the 12th SS Panzer Division right after D-Day, uh, uh, basically on 7th, 8th, June 1944. Mm. And I'm trying to, a few of us are trying to get this done um, for the 80th anniversary of D-Day in Normandy. So we're trying to get the very least stage readings um, done there to commemorate that. Um, this has been a, a labor of love for me because I'm dedicated to these Canadian veterans who had survived and the families and the ones that didn't make it and the ones that were murdered. So I've, I've written these plays and I will be continuing to prepare for the spring of 2024, which is the 80th anniversary of D-Day, when I'll be going overseas. Nice. Wow. Yeah, excellent. Not, I um, won't be landing on the beaches like they did in 1944. <laughs> uh, but, I was going to say. So, so I, um, I've been to this part of the country and, and met these amazing people here, but for all three of you, this is your first time here. So how are you digging the Fine Arts Center? How are you digging uh, Colorado Springs? Um, what, are you, what are you thinking? I think it's amazing. Uh, it's beautiful. It's a, a beautiful theater, a beautiful space, beautiful campus on Colorado College. And I, I've been through Colorado on tour, um, but I haven't just, you know, existed in between the mountains uh yeah. it's uh, it's amazing to yeah. wake up to that <laughs> skyline um and so far the weather has been fantastic oh, <laughs> i don't want to jinx it but uh the weather's beautiful um it's a pretty magical place it is you know we've only been here three days but i could get used to it yeah mm -hmm. well i'm a big plant nerd so the uh, the ecosystem is like insane. I love it. It's so different from New York City, and I just love it. Uh, the mountains. I I could go with the the alpine plants. I'm, I just like I can't get this stuff where I live. Okay, um, so I'm very excited about that. The I, I have been here very shortly. Mm -hmm. I went to Garden of the Gods last time I was here. Uh, uh, I was here very shortly last time I was here, and the only time I was here, and I want to do that again. Go horseback riding. I, I, yeah. Go horseback yeah. riding. Yeah. That's really nice. I yeah. really want to do really that. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, we'll probably do that tomorrow. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, there's something in the air. Everything feels golden here. Mm. Mm. You know? It's just like kind of, if, if, it feels very like a homey kind of place. Mm -hmm. What? Well, maybe there's gold around here. <laughs> <laughs> gold in them hills. Um, I, um, I, I, I basically passed through Colorado Springs years ago when I was a teenager. Um, mainly, mainly what I knew about it is that if there was an all-out nuclear war, this would be the first strike. Um, <laughs> but that was because it's, it's got, NORAD headquarters was here in Cheyenne Mountain, which I think is mothballed now. But anyway, um, and I knew the Air Force Academy was, there, was here, but uh, I didn't know much else. And I think um, it's beautiful. It's, um, I've seen at least one gorgeous sunset, um, and one a week is all I need. 
um, and um, it's just it's easy going the people are very nice very polite um, and uh, so far so good I'm I'm uh, so far I'm a fan of Colorado Springs right. I am we'll wait to see if they'll be a fan of me <laughs> <laughs> It's easy to drive, you know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Coming from New Jersey, of, yeah. yeah, you can drive anywhere. It's no problem. Yeah. yeah. I haven't been caught in a in an eight car pileup yet, or a yeah. massive traffic jam. Or... And yet. I and I've never been to the theater. I've never been to this theater. Mm -hmm. yeah, me neither. I the first time I remember walking through the door and seeing the stage, I was. Yeah, I was very excited. It was very, yeah. Um, and it's just a beautiful facility. It seems like art is very appreciated here. And it seems like it's exponentially getting bigger and bigger art-wise and, and uh, art culture-wise. And I think that's very exciting. I'm honored to be a part of that. And I should also, I, I think this is a gorgeous theater and the people who work here are really great. Um, I'm really, really impressed. It's a great facility. Everybody who works here is terrific, and they should all get massive raises mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. right away. Yes, yes, so true. <coughs> Starting with the director of misery. <laughs> so I've been asked, um, why should people come and, and, and see the show? I, for me, it's very easy. Just, just look. Right. Um, and I know it's hard to believe, but I can't remember the last time that it's a joy to come to work every day. I mean, this is what we do, right? This is what we do. But it's nice to be in a room where you're respected, where you're heard and where you can get your work done. So if, if, if I could tell anyone out there why they should see this play, because if you don't see this play, you just ain't cool. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Oh, well, I think you'll regret it first off. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, because uh, it's a great play. It's really a head scratcher. It makes you think. And um, I'm really excited how the audience is going to respond to Annie. <laughs> the like will there be any empathy will they be confused I, i'm not i will they be terrified uh but i think it i think it will challenge the audience in a fun way and i think that you'll also you might laugh a few times mm -hmm. there's humor like well first of all i have to say that <clears throat> to my left are a great group of people um, these are both wonderful actors. Sammy, I, I already knew was a great director and a great guy. I knew him from before, but then I met these two actors and they're terrific. And so I can safely say that two out of the three actors in the show will be great. <laughs> <laughs> and the direction. Um, however, um, um, I think, I always remember s seeing an interview with Gregory Peck and he asked his favorite actor, Walter Houston, for some advice as an actor. Um, and Walter Houston told him, always give him a good show and always travel first class. Well, I didn't travel first class. Um, close, but uh, it, was a, it was a good trip. But I think we've got a good show. And um, again, it's what else you have to do. No, I think it's a great, I think it'll be a great evening in the theater. And it's theater. And it's only 90 minutes. And it's only 90 minutes. That's, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, I, I, I am also excited to do this show because of the sets and the costumes. I think I'm going to be doing my damnedest to keep up with what the designers have come up with. Uh, it's going to be amazing. Uh, I don't want to give too much away, but the, okay, <laughs> the set is fantastic. Um, it's, it's suspense. Uh, it's action, and it's a lot of emotion from all of us. Uh, it's, it's people pushed to their utmost. I, I, you know, 
all of this is 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 really fine and good. I mean, it's great. But there were people that got together that decided that this was what the season was going to be, right? I am so excited about what the next season is going to be, right? Um, and you can always tell when you're in a class joint. Hmm. And you can yeah. always feel that you're loved and you're heard. And so, you know, just just make a space for me in dressing room three. I'll just order cable and I'll be here for the next, you know, <laughs> five months, you know. Um, but it's a, it's a beautiful theater. Uh, these actors are amazing. And we would like for you to join us in the celebration of the opening show of the season mm -hmm. here at the Colorado Fine Arts Center on the Colorado College campus. So don't sleep on this. Thank you. And thank you. And, and thank, thank you. you. Thank you. He's a great director.